Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to do a symphony highlight. And I wanted to highlight a symphony um, that's very basic, but has provided alpha um, going back at least 13 years. And um, that's, that's key to me because uh, a lot of the symphonies now are very complex. Um, they're symphonies nested within other symphonies. Um, and for someone who is a beginner, let's say, or, or, or just a signed up to composer, I, I think it's, uh, it, it's illuminating to showcase symphonies that what I, what I call second generation symphonies, um, just to really quickly rehash that first generation symphonies are laundry list symphonies, rebalancing symphonies, second generation symphonies have maybe a single line of logic. If this, then that. Um, and then the third generation symphonies are what I would call the discord symphonies, which are symphonies within symphonies they are quite long. So um, what I wanted to do is showcase this one. But before that, like you just see today, the market is soaring. I am up 5% um, here um, in Composer. And I am up, let's see here, 3%. Uh, in Schwab, it used to be TD Ameritrade, but it switched over to Schwab. Um, so three percent here, up over thirteen thousand. Um, so thirteen thousand here, eleven thousand here. So twenty twenty four thousand um, dollars volatility, positive volatility on one day, which is excellent. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's get into this particular symphony. I just want to showcase this here. So this is Enhanced Momentum, Simple ETF Leverage. I think this might have been one of the ones that Composer initially offered. And then I might have added a little bit of leverage to it by adding UPRO into it. But it's a pretty basic symphony. So this is the live um, result. So you can see I put in $2,000 into the symphony. Um, the present value is uh, 2436 So it, it breaks it out to an annualized of 55 Max drawdown of 10, sharp ratio 1.474. Uh, you can see today it's up 1.49%, 1.51% now. Um, you can see it is holding uh, IEF, so it's holding bonds. So it's not really capitalizing on this massive upswing today on a lot of equities, but it's still up. And um, let's go back here and let's go into the simulated before I go into the logic. So let's go three years. So you can see three years, 18.1%, um, 10,000 into 16.4. Let's go to 2016. So again, what I showed you initially was the, the live results of my $2,000. Now I'm showing the simulated, uh, the back test. And then the, the, this um, pink purple line here is actually the index, um, the vanilla index here, uh, VOO, SPY. Um, you can see the difference, but let's go back. So it's, wow, 30.6 um, return. So 10,000 to 64,000. Um, and then let's go back. Let's go back all the way to 2010. Let's see if we can do that. So it's about, th it's about 13 years. Um, yep, actually exactly 13 years. Uh, 19.6, so 10,000 basically is 10x, 101,000 in the last 13 years. Um, some of the stats, the 19.6 versus 12.6, um, you know, you've had, you've had a higher max drawdown. Calmore ratio is about the same. Sharp ratio is a little bit lower than the SPY. Um, but, uh, but basically, you know, one of the things to understand is, you know, a vanilla index fund is going to give you in this period 12.6. So most people, if you walk into a, into a financial advisor's offers, they're going to say, you know, 7 to 11%. In this particular 13 years, it's been a little bit higher, 12.6. But historically, it's in that 7 to 11%. Um, and there's hedge funds that spend millions upon millions of dollars in research and development, uh, in information, in staffing and don't return 19% over the long term. In fact, many underperform uh, the index. So if you can find a 
um, logic based symphony that's pretty basic and gives you alpha over the long term. Um, it's excellent. Now, again, will this perform 19.6 over the next 13 years? Hard to say. Um, but let's look, take a look at the logic here and you can just see how basic it is. It's literally um, just this. So it starts if 60 day cumulative return of BND is greater than 60 day cumulative return of BIL risk on. And so what that's showing here is BND and BIL are both um, bond funds. BIL is a short term uh, bond fund. BND is uh, an index. So it's you know short, mid, long. But basically it's saying if if the the overall bond bond index bnd is greater than short term then you want to go risk on and why is that well when short term bonds uh, outperform long term bonds oftentimes it's it's showcasing fear in the market because people are selling long duration people are selling equities and buying the safest thing which is short term treasuries so as long as the overall bond index, bond index is outperforming short-term bonds, it's likely that you're in a risk-on period uh, is the logic here. And then, and then it's using a little bit of momentum here to select the asset. That You're sorting the 90-day cumulative return. You're taking one of these, so the 90-day cumulative return. So I think I might have added um, UPRO and TQQ into this. Uh, it it might have just been SPY here, and I added these two in to add a little bit of leverage, give a little juice, and you can see uh, – you know, going back to 13 years, it would have been, been a great decision. Um, you know, so it holds a, a, sh a short term bond, um, triple Q, uh, a mid cap. So you're basically going to own one of these. And um, if you're in the risk off, so if, if you're if BIL is greater than BND, you're going to own midterm treasuries, IEF. So very basic, but yet. It's giving you alpha, and so it actually shows that if you had started in 2010, and um, this is what you would be holding today, uh, it's showing market value of 103,000, um, and you'd have this amount of shares of IEF. So yeah, just a you know a cool, um, basic uh, strategy that um, you know many people new to Composer. Uh, many people can understand and sort of it's in that idea of, you know, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. It's not, you know, we could take, uh, you know, just going back here, you could take like uh, one of the, um, you know, 200 day moving average strategies. It's also done quite well. You can see 2095, 2500. There's another one here, 1590 to 2600. Um, but you can take one of these and just for comparison, let's just take, take this one here. Um, you know, so look here, I'm going to start scrolling. So you're going to see all the nested symphonies, symphonies within symphonies, still, still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling, still going, still going. So again, very complex, complicated. The other one, basically one, uh, line of code, one conditional. So, um, and there's another one I wanted to showcase. And it doesn't mean that necessarily the simple ones will outperform the more complicated ones, but it's just like for someone who's maybe new to investing, new to the market, understanding the logic behind it and seeing that it does provide alpha going back 13 years. Um, this one is similar. It's, it's, it's even more simple than this one. You see 2000, they're almost exactly the same here in the returns, risk on or risk off leverage S and P 500. So instead of using the momentum, um, 60 day. So it's the same conditional there. That's why the returns are probably the same. Uh, it's going to go instead of using momentum or it's going to give you, uh, several assets to select. Um, it's actually just going to choose you pro in the risk on period. And then it's the same in the IEF. So the returns of these two are likely to be the same or similar moving forward. Um, where it would differ is the other one has T triple Q. So in periods where, um, the NASDAQ is soaring and the other one's going to hold T triple Q. That might outperform you pro so um but again similar similar funds let's take this one back uh let's take this one back to oh this is the live let me let me go simulated so again live you're at 54.3 let's go simulated um let's go back the same thing all the way to 2010. okay so again 21.9 i think the other one was 19. um again hedge funds 
investors would kill for a, a 20 plus uh, a CAGR annualized return uh, over the long term. Now, 13 years necessarily isn't long term, long term, meaning it's not a, an investing career. It's not a 20 year, it's not a 25 year, a 30 year, 40 year. But if you're compounding capital in this range, if this continues to do this over the long term, um, you're in a, a great position. So there it is. So yeah, that just kind of gives you guys a sense of, again, two um, pretty basic, uh, simple symphonies um, that are giving you uh, thus far great returns. So that's it for today. I uh, appreciate all the feedback, comments, questions, all of that. Take care.